Well, today we're going to try and fix the roof on this uh, Porsche 911. It's a 1999 model, 996. I've had it for a couple of years now and had to fix a lot of stuff on it, unfortunately. But right now the problem is the roof doesn't go down um, when I use the button. Now I've had to top up the uh, hydraulic fluid a few times, which is in the back, and that's part of the replacement process. But the plan for the day is to get the hydraulic cylinders out and rebuild the seals. You'll know you have a leaking seal if you end up with a whole bunch of hydraulic fluid in front of either the back left or the back right wheel. So, uh, first thing we'll do, we're going to release the roof mechanism and get the rear clamshell open a bit. We'll take out the rear boot carpet and uh, then we'll see if we can get the hydraulic cylinders out to rebuild them. I did buy a rebuild kit on eBay, so we'll see how good it is anyway. Right. Right. So, let's see what happens. Nothing will happen actually. Right. The latch opens a bit. Roof doesn't actually move out. Let's see if the rear clamshell's open enough. Yeah, it looks okay. We'll probably get it out a little bit further back. There we go. So we've got the rear clamshell open a bit. Now we're gonna get the rear window unlatched. I seem to recall the rear clamshell opening more than this, but hey, maybe I was wrong. So when you look down here, you see that little ball? We're just gonna flick that off. Might grab um I grab a tool. Anyway, of course the video cuts out, random reason, don't know why. But we've got the little ball joints popped out on both sides and once you've done that, you can just flip the rear window up on itself like that. So these ball joints here and the one on the other side over there, when you're putting things back, just pop them back on in here. So we've got this bit of carpet now that will need to come out. This one's pretty easy. Um, most of it is fairly loose uh, and there are I think uh, just these four little plasticky things that we're just going to pop loose. Trust me, it's easy with two hands. Okay, so I've popped all them four plastic clips off and you know, they're pretty old and brittle, they're 20 years old, so I might replace them entirely at some stage. Anyway, you can probably see here you got one, two, three, four holes where little plastic things used to be. Once that's done, you can pretty much just lift this carpet out. Access to the rear hydraulic stuff. Let's put you away. Alright, clean you up later. Alright, so now with the carpet out of the way, you've got access to everything back here. Now at some stage, Probably next stage actually, I'm going to remove this. This is the motor mechanism that actually moves this rear clamshell back and out of the way. Now, if you've only got a little leak, a small leak in your convertible roof, uh, which is what I had initially when I got this car, probably once every six months I'd have to pop up the fluid because only a little bit would leak out. Now it's to the point where it just gushes out and there's no point just topping it up anymore. Anyway, this here, 
is your little hydraulic uh, fluid reservoir. And if we look real close, I'm going to try and point to it. There. Okay. That little uh, spot there, that's where you can actually top up your hydraulic fluid. You get a, I don't know, I think a 5mm, 5mm uh, hex key, Allen key, and a curved syringe, and you can top that up. Uh, and that might keep you going for a little while. You can get the Porsche stuff, but you can also get a an equivalent. This is what I've been using. And uh, wherever you are in the world, I'm sure you can find a local equivalent anyway. So anyway, the next step is to have a look at the hydraulic cylinders, cylinders try and find a way to get them out of the car. So the main hydraulic fluid reservoir is there. We can see these lines here. All right, that's one of them. Another one going the other way. So that one here. Follow where the cables go. Up to here. All right, so this is one end of the hydraulic. A little bit dark, I'm afraid. Now, I think what we're going to have to do here is pop off that little clip and that little clip there. This arm here attaches to the bottom of the roof mechanism. And if we look all the way down the other end, it's pretty dark. You can see if we follow um, that piston there. Too dark anyway, but uh, I'll shine a light in there. There's a big bolt at the other end, which is going to be a prick to remove, I can tell already. Anyway, we'll move this one here, the one at the other end, this clip, that clip, this bar, and uh, we'll probably loosen up some of these lines and maybe even just take them right off here. We should be able to get uh, these arms off. Anyway, next thing we'll do, we're going to remove this motor here. Uh, that moves the, the rear hatch or the clamshell out of the way. How do we do that? to that, it's attached to that, it's attached to that, it's attached to here. Hmm, maybe it's that and that. Or back here to the bolt and the bolt. Anyway, I'll figure it out. Get back to you. Alright, well I've decided to skip moving that motor out of the way for now. I don't think it'd be that hard. Looks like there's just a few connectors and whatever that you remove and bolts. Hmm, we'll come back to that later. May or may not need to do it. I'll probably forget those words in a moment anyway, but yeah, if we have to do it later, fine, we can do that. Might actually start working on removing the left-hand side um, hydraulic cylinder first. This is the one that was leaking. Uh, you could tell it was leaking because there was a massive pool of uh, hydraulic, hydraulic fluid just in front of that rear wheel there. Um, so the first thing we're going to do, let's see if we can just remove that arm first of all. That was pretty easy. Try not to lose that. I have a little like a plastic box uh, that I'll use to keep all the loose bits. And we'll try and keep the left and right hand side separated. Oh yeah, and by the way, I have no idea what I'm doing. So um, purely for entertainment value, this video, and for me to keep track of things if I uh, forget something or I drop something, I don't know where a bolt goes to, I'll uh, come back to that later. All right, that seems to move out pretty easy. Hmm, okay, now, what I'm going to do, I'm actually going to put a bit of blue tape on this uh, and label which one's the top, which one's the bottom. Sounds a bit dumb, but hey, easy to forget, I feel. Alright, so we've uh, gotten that little arm out, labelled it, put it away somewhere safe. We're going to work on getting the main actuating hydraulic cylinder, whatever you want to call it out. 
13 mil there I figured out and uh, pretty sure the other end will be 13 mil as well so anyway start with one of them Interesting to watch. You don't want to be dropping these anywhere. Alright, so one's gone. Another one might be a little bit trickier. So we've got the 13 mil end, gonna run it all the way down the end. If you had a thinner uh, ratchet than this, I think you'd be a lot better off. Anyway, I'm going to turn this off for a moment, see right. if I can get it out. Anyway, uh, that bolt there comes off real easy, and we can actually see the whole thing. Already moves around a bit. And as I was trying to get the other nut, which is all the way down there, I managed to drop my bloody ratchet wrench. Um, anyway, maybe that was for a good reason. <laughs> Came inside. Took out the uh, speaker cover at the back, uh, retrieved this thing, which had fallen all the way down there. By the way, get a really thin um, ratcheting thing, this one's rubbish. But anyway, while we've got this off, you can actually see that big polished thing, that's the other end of the uh, hydraulic cylinder. And there's the nut right there. Yeah, that. Okay, so we'll just get a little um, ratchet wrench in there. Honestly, it's probably worth just taking out that speaker reel. It's two Torx screws, it only takes you a minute. And this will make it way easier to get at this bolt. And I'll do the same for the other side, just get the uh, speaker cover off. Get straight onto it. Um, so that should only take a minute. And then we'll take another video All showing right. where we're at. worked way better. So, pro tip, go in there, get your rear speaker grill out. Heaps easier to get at that 13mm um, bolt which is holding in the other end of the actuating rod thingamajig. Uh, so now I've taken all the bolts off, you can see two of them there at the bottom. There's little clips and that other arm, don't know what you call it. Uh, let's see if we can wriggle this thing out without causing a huge mess anyway. There's a little line at the other end, just want to make sure it's not caught on anything. No, looks like it's um, related to this one here, so it should be pretty loose. thing at the other end you can see well I mean I can see you can't see it's caught under something oh, of course you've put a bloody zip tie um, all right that's fine I'm gonna go back in the car here I took the speaker thing off and I'll snip that zip tie we'll get that out in no time all right, going back in the car again too so here we can see right that's the other end of our big uh, hydraulic actuator. See that little, no, you probably can't see it, does it? There's a little black hydraulic line attached to the end of the actuator and it's attached to that uh, corrugated thing by that metal clip that you see right there. So we're just going to pop that clip out of the way. The line which you can see above the clip, that'll come out oh, and hold things there out. There we are. We've got the uh, left cylinder out. This end here, that's the part that was attached all the way down here. Much easier if you take your rear speaker grill out to get to it, of course. We popped out that little clip that was holding the other end in down the bottom there too. 
looks like a, I don't know, sensor of some kind. Better not scratch it. But this is where all the problems are coming from. Right up in here. So I don't know how well it shows up on this video. Uh, but there's a fair bit of fluid leaking out. You can see that sort of black stain close to the actual uh, rod itself. So, and again, really hard to see, but there's a little metal, like a C-clip or ring. Uh, and then there's a white plastic uh, collar. And then under that collar is the perished seal which we're going to be taking out. So we've got to figure out a way to get that metal clip out. We've got some very small um, tool. I think I think we can just squeeze the ends together, reduce the diameter, and it should come out pretty easy. Then the white ring should come out. The, the broken seal will come out. Well, I'll make it come out. Got a new rubber O-ring, or sorry, nitrile, which is more resistant to the hydraulic flu fluid. Pop it back in, the white plug, the metal clip, pop it full of uh, fluid again run a few cycles and the roof, in theory, should work. Now, uh, I may be able to do it with that cylinder just lying here in the car. I mean, maybe it would make it easier if I'd taken out um, the roof movement, sorry, the clamshell, the rear clamshell movement mechanism, but uh, look, if I need to do it, it shouldn't take us too long, but if I don't have to do it, I'm not going to do it. Part one. Get the cylinder out. All right, so it watching. turns out I probably do have to remove that um, roof uh, clamshell moving thing because I'm going to have to undo all these hydraulic lines in order to put the new seals on that uh, actuator. So this doesn't look too hard to remove. Um, this kit did come with some instructions, but not enough photos. But everything's pretty clear to actually figure out. The main problem is 20 year old car, it's pretty dirty, greasy, particularly the old plastics are starting to crack and give way. Uh, that said, German cars compared to Japanese cars, the Japanese cars are always built better and last longer. Uh, I don't know if you can see the crack here, this one's already cracked way high off, that's great. Um, anyway, plastic weld, rivet, something, it's not structural but it would be nice to have it a bit more secure anyway back to here let's see we'll just try and disconnect anything that's connected i'll just come off all right not too bad there's a little squeeze plug on both sides so get your hand under and give it a little push like that yeah i'm probably broken something all right, that's fine. Uh, this one up here. There we go. Uh, that should come loose off that blue thing somehow. There we go. Little um, little push thing there. Maybe they didn't have to come off, but there's a couple of 10 mils behind here, it looks like. Looks like 10 mils anyway. So, anyway, part of the fun of having old cars like this, old cars you can kind of fix yourself, all the new stuff. And look, there's nothing wrong with new cars. I love a new car, I hate the depreciation on them. And Find if someone else is paying the bills. Um, anyway, new cars are all computerized and electronic and controlled by laptops, and that's great, but it's really hard for the DIY guy to have a go at fixing it himself. So I always figure, what's the worst case scenario? Let's say I give a crack at trying to fix this, and if I fix it, great, I've saved myself a bunch of cash, maybe cut my hands up a bit and got a bit greasy or something, but I've learned how to do something new. And there's a bit of value in that, I feel. 
too many people are uh, quick to just throw their hands up and go, oh my god, I can't do this, it's too hard, I'm going to pay a pro to do it. And look, that's fine for some people. Some people shouldn't be allowed to touch stuff in case they break it. I think we've seen that happen before. Um, but, again, the worst that can happen, if I screwed this up, oh well, I will call a pro in. Again, some people will say I probably should have done it from the beginning, but, number one, again, rather do it myself for the satisfaction of doing it myself, learning how to do it, maybe even helping other people learn how to do it, because, Fixing stuff is cool, especially fixing stuff yourself, that's the best part of it. Uh, let's see, alright, that's loosened up pretty good, but that's making the whole hydraulic, whatchamacallit, come loose, I don't really want that to move, I'm, I'm happy for that to stay where it is, so let's temporarily secure that again. I just want to get this motor mechanism out of the way because at the bottom of that hydraulic tank are the lines that run out to each actuator on either side. And we actually do need to have access to them in order to put the new seals on. Apparently, Porsche figured no one will keep a car like this for more than five or six years. We'll just put a really crappy, degradable, plastic, uh, organic, vegan friendly, hippie kind of shitty overing, I don't know, in it. Because then the first owner won't have to worry about it. The idiot who buys this car 20 years later has to do something about it. Anyway, I am that idiot. <coughs> and I guess a few of you guys are too. And girls, that's fine. Uh, <laughs> Why are you not moving? You are moving. Hey, 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 there we go. Ouch. Right, there we go. Um, uh, little pop out a zip time to the left is one on the right. Don't we all love working on old cars? Fantastic. So if you follow the line uh, from the motor, runs around to the back here, one of them sort of held down by this <coughs> zip tie thing, and that's out. So, good, heaps loosen now. Let's move that up, up, right, out of the way a bit. Uh, I've got a thing that will hold this back. to remove this out of the car, we just need to get it out of the way enough. Okay, nice one. Anyway, like I was saying, old cars are great fun, you can buy them cheap. Some other one, someone else has taken all the depreciation. And you know what, even if this is an old, broken, plasticky, kind of unreliable, not really fast car, it's still a 911, it's still good fun. Show me another rear engine, rear wheel drive, flat six sports car, with this kind of heritage that you can get for something less than the price of a new Hyundai or something. Love Hyundai though, tell you what, that's my wife's one out there, that's an i30, she's had that a few years, I've tried to move her into a Macan, she's not interested. Uh, that's the daily driver, um, KN Turbo, a few issues with that, but now it's been fixed, runs amazing, great sound, horrible fuel efficiency, it's like it's got a hole in the petrol tank, but don't care, worth it, every time you put your foot down, fantastic, I'll tell you that. Uh, this is the weekend drifter, don't get it driven much now, because every time I take it out I get pulled over by the cops, and that's fine, they've got to do their job, and my job is to not get pulled over, and that's cool. I love these wheels, they're incredible. And this one, so, story behind this thing, I uh, almost bought it by accident actually, it was, would you believe, an eBay listing, and I thought, yeah, no widget's going to bid on this, or someone surely's going to bid more than I'm bidding on it, but uh, hey, buying cars, sight unseen on the internet, I think I've done that way too many times, now, 
the hell was I talking about? Um, right, yeah, we've moved this motor mechanism out of the way. So that and these lines here move this whole big thing uh, out of the way when we push the button on the inside. Again, we're back to our hydraulic cylinder reservoir here. You see that hex nut there? That's what you remove if you're going to refill your tank. If you've got a tiny, tiny little leak like I had originally, you might only need to top it up once a year. And I'll probably do that. Um, but like I said, huge leak from my one. Tried, tried it one day, roof wouldn't move at all. Get out, have a look at the car. Big puddle of hydraulic uh, fluid on the in front of the left rear wheel. Uh, I'll do the right hand side cylinder too because, again, 20 years old. Not surprised if it's going to go. Since I've come this far and pulled one out, might as well pull the other one out. It's not going to take me that much longer. Anyway, getting back to here, these lines here. Uh, follow the colors. Got a red and red, and uh, nothing, no really colors in that. But anyway, um, two lines. One would be a uh, positive line feeding fluid out to the actuator, and one would be a return line, I'd imagine. I have no clue what I'm talking about. I'm just making stuff up. It seems logical to me, though. Um, that's why you got two lines, one in, one out, to both sides. What we're going to do, we're going to take out that bolt, and then we're going to have a look at these uh, hydraulic lines. I'm sure there's some sort of clever mechanicals or engineering going in there. Probably a bunch of washers I might drop or lose as well so as I do that I'll try and record it because that way it'll help me a whole lot when I want to come to put it all back together again. Um, yeah hydraulics. I don't know if modern convertibles are using the same kind of system or whether they're gone fully electric or something else. Hydraulic pretty good very efficient um, but when you got a leak like I have a whole lot of fun to remove. <sighs> uh, but I'm going to have a cup of tea and then we'll continue this later right. on. Anyway, now it appears to be time to remove the hydraulic lines from the cylinder. I don't know if you can see, but it says on the left blue and it says on the right red. Makes sense to me, okay? So you've got two lines, each cylinder, one blue, one red. We'll kind of be able to figure out where it goes. Uh, there's not actually much hydraulic fluid in there. Most of it's already leaked out, so if we put that light at the bottom uh, there, you can see the level in the tank's virtually empty. So there really shouldn't be much hydraulic fluid coming out of this thing um, when I take it out, but you never know. So I've got some towels ready, and uh, what we'll do is we're going to remove them now. Let's see if I can wedge that phone in there. All right, let's have a crack at that. And it looks like the, uh, the size of the bolt is a 12 mil, so you can use a spanner or a wrench or whatever. Let's pop a little cloth just in case there is a bit of muck coming out. So yeah, the blue lines are here, the red lines go back to there. Uh, maybe a bit of spillage, maybe not. Uh, crack that open pretty easy. And let me remind you, I have no idea what I'm doing, so do everything at your own risk. Now, what do we see here? Okay, now, not sure if you're getting that there, but uh, there's a thick washer, this end. There's a little mini one in between the two connections. I think there's another washer, thin one, just at the head, but this one here is kind of thick, so it's good to have this video or photos to remember what goes where. We can see a thick washer there, then one connection, then thin washer, another connection, then the uh, final washer at the end there. Now I don't imagine it makes much difference whether the left or right cylinder goes first, but in this case the right cylinder connection is closest to the pump. All right, that's to the right cylinder, closest to the pump, left cylinder, furthest away from the pump. So we're going to save all these washers, pretty important. 
as you can see not a drop of hydraulic fluid coming out so oh, okay <laughs> speak too soon there's a little bit on my finger there's the other washer right there right. and uh, one final washer in the bolt itself so there there's the blue lines taken care of So is this a job you reckon people can do? People. I don't know if I'm considered people or not. Uh, like I said before, I don't mind having a crack at anything, really. What's the worst couldn't happen, right? <laughs> Famous last words. Anyway, um, I think if you've got... I think if you've got like a reasonable selection of tools, there's no reason why you can't have a go at this. It does help, I, I feel, having a video like this to refer to. Um, plenty of other people on the internet have been very generous with their time to take these uh, videos and <laughs> ramble on and help people out. And, you know, seeing what needs to be done before you actually do it, I figure that helps a lot too. Don't lose any of them washes, okay? Final one, washer still on the bolt. Um, like I was saying, if you've got a reasonable range of tools, you should have socket set, spanner, spanners, screwdrivers, ratcheting wrenches will always help as well. Uh, air compressor, I love mine, use it a lot, sprayed up a car with it, S15 behind me. Uh, this is actually, so far, not using too many tools. Like I said, 10mm, 12mm, 13mm couple of screwdrivers, random plugs and stuff, so far, uh, yeah, give it a go, that's the worst that can happen, and then you can go and show all your mates at the pub and say, look what I did, aren't I good, I'm much better than you guys are, alright, so what I'm going to do now that we've removed these lines, we're going to follow the lines, uh, I already pretty much removed the left hand side one, um, so what we'll do next is we're going to take out the right side. I won't film it, same as before. We're going to pop that clip off, pop that clip off, take that 13 mil off there, and the other 13 mil way down the other end. Uh, I'm going to go back inside the car, take out the right rear speaker reel, two torque screws, real easy. Um, and that'll be heaps easier than trying to do it from the back. All right, yeah, don't try to do it from the back. Just, just take out the rear speaker grill. Saves you a heap of time and much easier. And you're not going to drop a bloody spanner in there like I did before. Alright, so we've got both cylinders in. I haven't put the nut on here or the one at the other end either. Um, but as you can see, there's plenty of thread left on that nut and maybe you can see right at the very end too. So you have to position it nice and snug because there's a little guide pin further down. There, you can kind of see it. It goes in that little channel, that little uh, diagonal thing there. Okay, we've got left and right cylinders in. We've tightened up the 13mm bolt at the back and at the front of the piston. Uh, the little things engaging the guide on the inside that you'll see. We've got the connection to the roof and the little spring clips back on. Put the hydraulic back lines back into the uh, appropriate holders. What we've got to do now is connect this back up to the pump. Blue and red, colour coded of course, and it actually does say down here. Uh, that red goes on the right, blue goes on the left. And then we've got little thin washers between the bolt, each of the uh, bolt head, and a thick washer okay. before it hits Everything's the pump. tightened up, and I've replaced the uh, blue and red hydraulic lines back into the pump with the washers, of course. And the fluid reservoir is pretty much empty, so what we're going to do, we're going to take out that there. That's a, I think, a five mil hex or Allen key. Uh, we're going to top up and fill that fluid right back up using some uh, hydraulic fluid just got to make sure it is uh, rated CHF11S and that will be uh, correct for the pump um, little curved syringe will help a lot this will take a bit of time and then after we've filled that back up uh, we will put back the clamshell motor give it a test run now because the fluid is really drained out, I imagine after I cycle the top up and down a couple of times, <laughs> presuming that it does work, 
Uh, then we'll have to top the hydraulic fluid back up again. We've we'll put see how the fluid back in there until it comes out of the access hole. Hard to tell, but uh, that bottom reservoir underneath there is now full of fluid. I don't know, maybe 120 mil, give or take. What we're going to do now is put the rear deck uh, actuator back in place. We're going to screw that back onto there. Put all the connectors back on. Uh, roughly refit everything. I won't put the carpet back in, but because uh, I've got a feeling we're going to have to top up that fluid again because there's a lot of empty air in the lines and uh, it's going to take a lot of fluid to refill it. Anyway, all right. Yeah, well, yeah. the uh, the back lid is on, kind of. Put little balls back in the anchors. I don't know what you call them. Uh, clamshell still half open where I left it last time. Pretty sure I remembered to tighten all the screws and nuts and bolts and everything. So what we're going to do now is uh, we're going to try starting the car first. And uh, we will see if this moves at all. But uh, I wouldn't be surprised if it doesn't move on the first attempt. Just glad the car starts anyway. Um, yeah, so what we're going to do is we're going to hit the roof open button. On Sunday, leaving him paralyzed. It, it is he wants an I can hear the pump. Profiling. I can hear the pump sort of moving. I hear it clicking. Okay, that's the closing part. Try opening again. Hear the pump moving fluid but no movement of the the roof or anything oh hang on hey we got a little bit of movement slowly that's actually better than i thought it would be um i'm gonna open and close the roof whoa <laughs> five or six times and we'll see what happens right, so this is actually that. the first time in about uh nine or ten months that the roof has come off this car um let's see what happens if we try to get it up this is going to take a while, I think. Ah, movement. Struggling. Struggling. There they are. Not bad. Okay. Ow! <laughs> Forgot about that window. Alright. That's not bad. Now, you can definitely hear the pump struggling because uh, it hasn't had fluid in a while. We'll see if it drops down again all the way. And clamshell's closing. Almost, 100%. Hey, cool. And windows go up. Perfect. Hey, pretty happy with that. Um, so, yeah, uh, breakdown of time and cost might have taken um, I don't know an hour two hours maybe to get the cylinders out I didn't rebuild them myself put the new seals in the seals I got off eBay about 50 bucks uh, 50 to 80 Aussie dollar uh, I took them to a shop they charged me a hundred Aussie dollar to get all the four seals out and give them back to me I thought that was okay professionals you know not an amateur like me uh, maybe uh, half an hour to one hour to put the cylinders back in um, 20 bucks of uh, hydraulic fluid and what I'm going to do, I'm going to put the roof up and down five, six, ten times uh, and then I'm going to check the pump, add more fluid if we have to. So overall pretty happy with that given I haven't had the top off this car, <laughs> yeah, nine or ten months. It's taken a global pandemic to give me actually time to, to get the roof off. Um, yeah, I hope it helps. If it's helped you, give it a thumbs up and uh, Tell your mates about it and get out there and drive all right so we put the roof up and down maybe half a dozen times and it was really struggling at the last one you want to make sure that your roof fails if it's going to fail make sure it fails while it's up because if it's down covering all the stuff you're in real trouble uh, again pretty hard to see um, that fluid was full and now it's pretty much down to empty again that's pretty much what i expected so we're just going to spend another 10 minutes topping it back up then we'll do the whole process again, we'll cycle it up and down, and we're going to keep checking that until all the fluid stays where it should be. Um, but we expect the fluid from the tank to run through all these lines here, 
Uh, so I might have to refill it a couple of times.